Also, the fact that Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَنْ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ I'm the closest ally or a friend of, of Jesus, peace be upon him. And then he says that the, the, the prophets are brothers but from different mothers. And then Isa alayhi salam speaks, right? And then he says, إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ أَتَانِي الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلِي النَّبِيَ I'm the servant of God. He gave me the book and he made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ SubhanAllah, look. And he's made me blessed wherever I go. Jesus worshipped one God alone. He never believed in a trinity. Uh, he never believed the, none of the prophets of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Preach the Trinity, preach anything. Jesus never preached that he's God. In fact, he told you to worship God alone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the new podcast of Minute for Allah. Today we have our special guest, Muhammad Ali from the Muslim Lantern. And uh, we will talk about some topics uh, relating to Christmas and the, what, what the people are celebrating during Christmas and some, some topics about uh, Prophet Jesus salam. So, Brother Muhammad, welcome. May Allah bless you. And the um, first question I had in my mind is uh, the Muslim Lantern. Where, where, this, where does this name come from? How does, it, uh, how does this start? And what, are, what is your... Uh, you make a lot of videos online. Mm -hmm. What's your audience and what do you do online? Wallahi, uh, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nuala. And first of all, I want to uh, thank you for inviting me. You know, uh, yeah. uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal make it a beneficial talk. Uh, regarding the channel, uh, the Ameen. Muslim Lantern and like the goals of the channel, etc. Well, uh, the name is not like, you know, it's something to do with Surah al nur and perhaps the verse of the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, right? And, and, and our goal is, uh, and the Prophet is also described as a Siraj al Murira, you know, his, his light for the people, light of guidance for the people, and the Quran is light. And our goal as Muslims uh, is to spread that light, the light of guidance to those people in darkness, right? And subhanAllah, even in uh, one of the descriptions that one of the Sahaba mentioned about the Prophet, والسلام, that he said is his description in the previous scriptures in a hadith in Bukhari, he mentioned one of the things is that he takes people out of darkness into light. So, uh, yeah, subhanAllah, that is the, the, the mission of, of the Muslim Lantern. It's, it's mainly, obviously, da'wah to uh, uh, non-Muslims, including Christians, Jews, atheists, you know, Hindus, Sikhs, whatever you, you come across, like, discussions with everyone. Sure. And also discussions with Muslims who, who might uh, have incorrect ideologies or need corrections. Uh, in certain things, certain beliefs are inaccurate. It does not really uh, go in line with the Quran and Sunnah. And this is the main message. Also, there's some educational videos that you will find, inshallah, on the channel. So it, this is the is da'wah initially, right? It's da'wah and educa education. These two things are the uh, main goals of the channel. No? Yeah, I hope everybody who is watching this podcast yes. now is going to be well. initiated. <laughs> inshallah. 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 Um, Maybe so, we should, uh, should yeah. dive in the topic of, uh, because uh, it's now uh, Christmas season mm -hmm. and uh, people are ce celebrating Christmas. Shirk mm. uh, Yeah. Shirk yeah. <laughs> So, um, and you also, mashallah, you had, uh, you have a lot of videos online with, mm. uh, talking with Christians mm -hmm. in, uh, in a very respectful man uh, manner also. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, what, what I find unique uh, mm -hmm. on the in your videos is that you deal deal with a nice matter, uh, manner. Mm -hmm. So um, even though people scream at you or they become mad, you always say mm -hmm. like, uh, relax, we just have a nice conversation. Mm -hmm. But what are the, what are the most, um, yeah, what, what are the, you know, most upcoming things you, you hear uh, in, in a conversation with the Christian? What are, what are the uh, topics? Uh, topics? Uh, you uh, say in the common, common yeah. discussions most or common the common, discussions, common topics yeah. of discussion, etc. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. If you do the da'wah, you have to be initiating more than people initiating anything. And mm. also you have to know where the conversation is going. You shouldn't be doing the da'wah and letting someone else flow the conversation because you, you, you're there to give the message, not to receive a message. Yeah. So if you're there to give a message, and most of the time people come to us because we, we're given free Quran and people come to us, so they're coming to receive something. Mm -hmm. So we direct the conversation most of the time, obviously, we will direct it towards the biggest disagreements that we have, which is the identity of Jesus, uh, Isa alayhi salam, and then uh, the Trinity. 
yeah. and prophet of the prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam yani and islam being the truth uh, the, these are the things that we'll mostly engage with when it comes to christian this is what we should focus on you find some people arguing about things which are useless uh, with christians yeah. like uh, that i personally consider to be useless too much arguing about sacrifice human sacrifice animal sacrifice yeah okay like so what matters is what you know who they're worshiping you know uh, are they worshiping the creator or not the tawhid the idea of the trinity and jesus this is now the core of uh, the issue in which you need to handle and you need to counter right yeah and then obviously the prophet of the prophet muhammad uh, that is the other side of it so this is you would find if you want if you're speaking about my content specifically this mm -hmm. is you'll find this is the most common kind of pattern so for example if um if you have a conversation with with a christian uh lady or man and uh, they believe that jesus is the son of god or they they believe that jesus is mm -hmm. is god mm -hmm. or part of the trinity what mm -hmm. what yeah how would you handle yeah, that how, how would you how would you start well mm -hmm. there's many ways like it's uh, this is the thing about that way like, like one uh, method it depends on the people depends on the mood you know <laughs> so yeah, maybe the mood yeah. will go for the a different argument because there's multiple mm -hmm. arguments right mm -hmm. uh, like for the idea of the sonship, sonship of god for example yeah what i usually tend to focus on is to show that this idea of sonship they're misunderstanding what the term son of god means from a biblical perspective okay uh, because Why? because they think jesus is the only unique son of god okay while in reality son of god is a term used all over the bible ephraim is called the son of god adam's called the son of god the genealogy, uh, David is called the begotten son of God because they think his begotten is unique. He's called that in Psalms 2-7. And uh, like literally everyone is called the son of God because it says, blessed be the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Like so every peacemaker, yeah. like they don't even see Christian, you know? Mm -hmm. So every peacemaker, whoever he is, according to the verse is a son of God. And uh, so their understanding of it is inaccurate. So it's more and new. when yeah when the Jewish people use it for example it's more that someone looks after you and you says my son <laughs> takes care of you looks after you uh, gives you provision which is essentially what God does but it does not mean like father and son relationship in in the sense that which they take it and another way is obviously like speaking about the Bible itself and this and that it's reliability when you say Jesus said or Jesus didn't say it's another way to go about having a discussion as well so uh, yeah it depends it depends as I said on the people and uh, yeah uh, and one of the most common arguments that you probably hear that uh, are certainly not uh, invented by me or anything that you'd hear like where did Jesus claim to be God right it's a simple very simple question uh, to, to ask yeah. where did he claim divinity right where did he explicitly say which is like a very fair question I would say you know mm -hmm. where would he say because this is our disagreement with the Christians okay where does it the Bible say what you're claiming that it says where does he himself claim for himself not someone else claiming something for his behalf i can say x person is a x you know i don't want to say a bad word but let's say this, this person is this this person is that mm -hmm. this person is a thief a murderer i can claim that about you but where is the proof the evidence did you say it yourself is there evidence of you doing the action if not then your claim is irrelevant because anyone can make a claim about anyone saying anything so yeah it's a simple question okay where did jesus claim divinity where did they say i'm god where did they say worship me but this concept doesn't, I think, think it's 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 coming from nowhere, right? This this belief coming that from they are, it, it's it's it's, it's very abstract. It's coming from somewhere, right? This that they believe that. Yeah, this uh, is a historical Jesus thing. Is, okay. So most people are sheep, as you just probably said earlier. You know, <laughs> most people are sheep, and by sheep I mean they follow what, what goes on around them, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, they, they themselves don't know what they believe. Actually, I'll tell you. Many Christians speak to. Oh, I don't know. I mm. say, does the Bible say? Jesus is God. No, the church says that Jesus is God. So the church says Jesus is God, or misuse certain verses which are not which are ambiguous, not clear. Like Jesus saying, for example, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life," which actually I believe proves he's not God. Actually, because if he says "I'm the way," he's not the destination. He's the way to what to the Father. So if you're the way to God, you're not God, is it? Hmm. Cannot be God if you're the way to God. So the own verses they're using is actually evidence against them most of the time. Mm. Yeah. But the thing is, they don't think about what they're saying because the church says it, so they repeat it after the church. And then where did Jesus become divine? That's clear in the history of Christianity. Uh, 325, the Council of Nicaea. You had Arius, which was, was a church father, and you had Athanasius, who was another church father. And they were arguing about the di divinity of Jesus, specifically his equality with the, whom they call the father. Because Arius had a, a position of subordination that, that 
Jesus is subordinate to the Father. He's not equal to the Father. Mm -hmm. He's a lesser God, you know, yeah, <laughs> or a lesser divine entity. While Athanasius said, no, 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 he's equal, you know. Mm -hmm. And then that position then was forced on the Christians mm. to believe that that Jesus is, uh, because everyone else was deemed heretic by the Roman emperor, emperor Constantine, obviously, this is what he liked. So he, they killed anyone else who opposes that view. And then you have 381, the Council of Constantinople. By the way, this is basic history, right? Anyone who, who opens the books of Christian history, the Christians wrote themselves, will see these debates. This is not, nothing we're mentioning here. It's crazy, but Christians, 90% of them probably don't know. 90, I'm being generous, you know? 90% of them. <laughs> so 381, then they added the Holy Spirit into the mix. Because they, they were not even uh, aware of what party, the Holy Spirit yeah. is. They the were not Spirit, even, yeah. yeah. What is the Holy Spirit? They didn't even know. Is that a cocktail or what? Obviously, you know. They don't know even what the Holy Spirit is. And uh, in the end, they just decided, okay, uh, actually, you know what? There's something called the Trinity. And the, 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 the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three. Are they three? No, but they're one. Are they one? No, but they're three. Okay, so how are they one, but they're three? Oh, they're actually person. But what do you mean by person? Person is different from a being. Since when is person different from a being? The, only, the only, last time I checked, person and being is the same thing. Right? Mm, yeah. A human being is a person and a being. Since, since when is it different? It's like your person is different from your being. What does that even mean? Yeah. But this is introducing philosophy, Greek philosophy into Christianity. And then, oh, there are three persons in one being. How can you conceive of that? You can't. It's a mystery. So you have to believe in the mystery that doesn't exist in the Bible. So yeah, it's, it has a history basically behind it. And yeah. I think even if you look at Christmas, mm. it's the same thing like the Christmas tree it has nothing to do with Isa alayhi salam. Mm. If you look at, for example, uh, the, the, the 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 celebration around it and everything and mm -hmm. this uh, Santa Claus is coming on a uh, it, with presents and everything it, it just doesn't yeah. make any sense and what that that's something do, yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah. something that you that you just just discussed about like mm. sheep yes. it's the mentality yeah. of sheep mm. because what does this these things have to do with the the birth of Jesus for example if we follow if if we yeah say, okay so example, it, okay Christi yeah. Christi Christmas and Christianity it's it's a very funny thing because when you look at, at uh, the idea of Christmas, where this idea originate from, where this idea come from, and you actually trace it historically, you realize actually, you know what? But even before we go into the history of it, the Christians today, it's like, uh, they claim that Christmas is Christ mass, is the group of people grouping for Christ, for the birth of Christ, the, the time that Jesus was born. But exactly as you said, that's why I'm saying it's a funny thing. The holiday itself is not about Jesus. So if this is a celebration for Jesus, then why is the holiday practices of the holiday not about Jesus to begin with, right? The holiday is not about Jesus for one specific reason. It's the fact and the practices they do are not about Jesus because of the history of it. Mm -hmm. So the Christians who celebrate these things, even though they would claim uh, that it's a, it's a Christian thing, so you have some of them who would say it's a Christian thing, that's why you'd have churches celebrating it. But when you go to the history, you realize that this comes from a pagan practices. Pagan practices. So Specifically, uh, Saturnalia. So pagan, you mean yeah. you mean um, idol worshippers, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Idol worshippers, uh, <coughs> like uh, element worshippers, fire and stone, and these type of things, right? My juicy, my juicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, polytheists we call the core polytheists, right? Okay. So it comes from from uh, these pagan practices, uh, which are even condemned in the Bible itself. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. even condemned in the Scripture itself. Uh, where you, if you read in the Old Testament, where it condemns this idea of of cutting trees and then decorating in it, you know, and it's, it's called pagan practices. The, in the Bible says, in the Bible. yeah, the Bible itself, it claims that it is a, a idols that you make. But the problem with that is not only what the Bible says, is the fact, they don't really care about what the Bible says, most of Christians today, because they don't, they don't really practice Christianity. But the history traces back to Saturnalia, uh, which is a worship and specific God, right? Uh, and uh, when did this start? Did this start in the early days of Christianity? You know, when Jesus, quote unquote, died to, according to them, we don't believe that, or was raised up, either way, you after the ascension, whichever way you want to put it, did people celebrate that? No. For the first hundred years, no. Second hundred, uh, no. Third, no. Until someone called uh, Pope Francis, or sorry, Pope, uh, Pope Julius I. Until Pope Julius I introduced the uh, this idea. Why did he introduce this idea? Because the Roman Empire, we're just talking about the Roman Empire now. Roman Empire adopted Christianity. When the Roman Empire adopted Christianity, he already introduced a lot of their beliefs. So uh, my claim is the Trinity is one of those beliefs because the, 
the uh, Roman Empire had already sons of God and daughters of God and all of these things. So introduce, they introduced this philosophy. That's why you have all of these crazy terms that go back to Greek origins. This idea of person and being goes back to Greek philosophy. The idea of hypostatic union, it's like Jesus has two natures, goes back to philosophy. The idea of the Trinity, all of it goes to Greek philosophy. So they've introduced that into Christianity. And, and because the Roman Empire adopted Christianity, a lot of people are celebrating Saturnalia. So Pope Fran this Pope Julius, uh, what, what he uh, ended up doing is, you know what? Let's actually Christianize this holiday, you know? That's uh, the Saturnalia is just with the Christmas trees, huh? the, the pagans that are Yeah, just they, they, the they had their, their holidays and giving gifts, all of these things that you see, giving gifts to one another and the dating of it, right? So, uh, and, and, and the funny thing is, is you know what? Even Christmas, the, uh, Christians themselves, when you look at their scholars, they admit that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. Yeah. yeah 25th yeah. of December. He was not born in that date. If you open that in Encyclopedia Britannica, for example, they will say that. If you see, there was a, a minister, a Christian minister, and he was speaking, his videos online, you can put it in, the, in, in your podcast if you like, his video where he speaks. It's available on YouTube, but he's interviewed, and his name is Pat Robertson. And he's asked by that woman that he, the question is, that a person, a Christian person asks, I have a friend who doesn't celebrate Christmas, and he keeps telling me it's a pagan holiday, right? Mm -hmm. And that Jesus was not actually born on the 25th. So what should I do? You know, so he said, they're, going, they're going to that minister. So the minister said, yeah, you should tell him that he's right. <laughs> because, <laughs> and then he goes on to explain why uh, the Roman, how the Roman Empire, exactly everything I just said to you. This is a Christian minister. It's not, uh, he's very popular, famous in America, right? It's not Muslims are making these claims, right? You had uh, other other people as well. Uh, I can mention many of them, who mention in, in Christian history, who will tell you that you know what, Jesus was not born on the twenty fifth, and this is not a, a a holiday that comes from Christianity, because when you read the Bible, you see that uh, the Bible mentions in Luke, for example, chapter two, verse eight and nine, where it talks about Jesus' birth. It says that uh, the shepherds were out in the night. Now, in that area of Palestine, Jerusalem, how can shepherd be out in the night in the in the with the with the sheep in this cold? They will die. Yeah, they will die. You cannot come out as a shepherd if it's if it was winter, as they're claiming, which is actually the peak of winter, literally December when it snows. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's the time yeah. where it snows. So the shepherd, shepherd, is, no shepherds would be out in the field, and that's what Encyclopedia Britannica uses, and all of these Christian. Scholars from the past, uh, they use, they say, look, he could not have been born in the wintertime. And Saturnalia was uh, that God was the God of uh, agriculture. So the holiday was for uh, in that time because you know what? Now it's the cold time, not the vegetation time. So they make these gifts, you know, and they make sacrifices for that God. So then they can give them a good season of, you know, vegetation when yeah. the summer comes. So it's all related to that. So when you say, for example, uh, uh, Santa Claus, which is actually, if you think about it, quite creepy, isn't it? An old man, fat old man comes from your chimney to, to touch your little kids. I yeah. mean, why is this, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. if an old man coming down the chimney, fat guy with a, with a big belly, yeah. with a beard coming down my chimney. With Coca-Cola in his hand. Yeah, and to touch my little kids. But I don't know what he's doing with my little kids. And then taking some gifts I leave for them. And like, how is that related in any way, shape or form yeah. to the idea of Christianity and, and, and believing in Jesus? But yeah. the, the thing is, it still remains. It still remains the idea that, that, that Christians in their psychology believe that this is, celebration many of them believe that this celebration uh, uh, of the dead birth of Jesus and therefore now it is the problem for the Muslims it's a problem for the Muslims well, which Muslims the Muslims who are uh, celebrating this holiday quote-unquote ho holiday right which is a pagan day according as we just said to Christian yeah. uh, learned men right not, not the public people who don't even know anything about anything but the the learned people or historians clearly have have made that point clear so when a muslim celebrates and celebration can be anything right celebration can be saying to them a term in which they use in that you know the term what they use merry christmas the term that specifically they use saying that term in that time to someone in that context is a form of celebration and that's why they always tell you Eid Mubarak, yeah? Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak. <laughs> they tell us or Ramadan Mubarak or Ramadan Kareem, whatever term they hear from Muslims. Because they, what is it? They're congratulating you, celebrating with you the, mm -hmm. the, the coming of that holiday for you, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, or celebration can be putting a, Christ a Christmas tree, which as we just said is, a, is literally the Bible, even the Bible, if you want to talk about Islam, calls it 
uh, an idol. You're actually putting an idol there, right? Yeah. And and a lot of these gifts are given as as uh, from people to each other, or or as uh, when you give something to a god, you know, when you give uh, an offer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, this is a huge problem. So these people who have this tree, you need to under, understand where, where the origin that it comes from. So if a Muslim, whether a Muslim says that Christians, because a lot of Muslims say, you know what, they, they're not celebrating it as a Christian thing. Whether they celebrate it as a Christian thing or not, it's, it's uh, you pick one of two. It's either a Christian thing or a pagan thing. Yeah. Pick your poison, as we say, you know. Yeah. Which one do you want to pick as a Muslim? You know, either way, shirk, shirk and shirk. Which one you want yeah, to pick? Yeah. Yeah. You basically you cannot try to escape this idea by pretending because a lot of Muslims try to do hey, they don't actually believe it's just a holiday no 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 no. the origin of it is either pagan or that they do have beliefs that this is a, a Christian thing and that they believe that this is the time where God has his son let me ask you this yeah if I or someone sitting here someone disbelieving but we're not, not going to say people sitting here one of disbelievers sitting here and he curses Allah mm. would you congratulate him for cursing Allah no, of course, not. of course not. What would me congratulating him for cursing Allah be considered? Shirk. Disbelief. Disbelief. Yeah, disbelief. It's kufr, not shirk. Right? Kufr, disbelief. Yeah, yeah. This is that this person has just cursed Allah, and yeah. I congratulated him for cursing my God. Mm. Do you understand how how problematic that is? Why the, why am I giving this analogy? Because this is effectively what what happens. Because yeah. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the authentic hadith that Sabani uh, ibn Adam. Right, a son of Adam have cursed me, and then Allah explains that He ascribed to me a son. What well, what is the cursing that that He did? He ascribed to me a son. Wa al ahadu samad. I'm the one unique, uniquely one, a samad, the independent. So when He says al ahadu samad, because if you have a son, that son is also God. A samad, the self sufficient, independent. So he, there is no one that depends. Everyone depends on Allah alone. You cannot be depending on Jesus and Allah. Then you're not a samad anymore. You're not yeah. the one that is sufficient for the needs of all the creation. So that's why Allah mentions Al-Ahad Al-Samad, right? And Allah says, Sabbani ibn Adam. So Allah is telling you to ascribe a son to Allah is cursing Allah because in initially you are demeaning the status of Allah so rather than saying that he's one, absolute, self-sufficient. You've ascribed a partner to Allah. Yeah. And then a Muslim goes and yeah, he congratulates the person for cursing Allah because effectively that's what the holiday is about. It is the celebration of the birth of the son of God. And you have a Muslim who goes, who can congratulates another person. People, Muslims need to understand this is like effectively what you're doing. Whether you understand or you don't understand is effectively what you're doing. Or you're celebrating the association or uh, and, and the people who worship other than Allah and give sacrifices for other than Allah uh, so they can have good agriculture and good rizq and this. Either way, this is a problem of what you're doing. Yeah. And the fact that there are Christians or many Christians that believe that this is the date that the Son of God was born, this is enough for it to be, even if it's, if the truth is it isn't, they still believe it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you uh, congratulating them for it, you're congr congratulating them for that belief. Yeah, a lot of people, they say it's uh, symbolic, mm -hmm. eventually, when you just uh, encounter their uh, reasoning, mm -hmm. when you say, look, uh, even the Christians themselves, scholars say it's not only 25th, it's not true. And they, mm -hmm. the, the, the story about the shepherd, mm -hmm. um, and eventually they, uh, they just say, yeah, but it's something symbolic. So mm -hmm. like, 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 uh, uh, like the same thing when I'm uh, celebrating my uh, mm -hmm. birthday, mm -hmm. it's something just to symbolic. Family yeah. and friends, just mm -hmm. to have a good time. Right now you see it's uh, commercialized. Mm -hmm. It's commercialized. You see yeah, yeah. even in America, what I've heard is that a lot of people, mm -hmm. they get in so much uh, credit card debt because mm -hmm. they have to buy Christmas uh, presents for yes. for uh, for uh, all the mm -hmm. children, for mm -hmm. the nephews, the cousins, everybody. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you see that after Christmas, mm -hmm. like the first six months mm -hmm. after that, they're just trying to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. And the, the funny thing is the children, mm -hmm. they think, it's Santa Claus, not the father. So they're thanking the wrong person. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, imagine yes. you're working so hard and eventually this is Santa Claus brought presents. So <laughs> you know, subhanAllah, the Muslims, the, the problem they have is Allah Azza says in the Quran, he says to the Prophet Isaiah, they wish, this is what they wish, right? That this disbelieving people. That you compromise with them. Yeah. And they compromise with you. And this is what Muslims are effectively doing. 
they say to me, but he said to me last year, Eid Mubarak, you know? Yeah. How can I not say to him, uh, yeah. Yeah. Try, marry this trying or marry to find that. common ground. Exactly. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, you know what? How can I not compromise? And we know Surah Al Kafirun. The people came to the Prophet and they said, You worship our God for our God for a period of time. We worship your God for a second. Same exact thing. Compromise for with us a little bit. You know, give us your Merry Christmas a little, a little bit. Relax and we bit. and we yeah, and we give you the Eid Mubarak a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then the Prophet mm. completely rejected. Why? Because the minute you do that, you've entered into this belief. There is no options of compromising this and compromising that. But those people, why do they do what you're saying? <clears throat> the reason they do what you're saying, it is because they already have the incorrect taqir. They already have the incorrect belief. They don't have the correct belief in Islam. They have zero knowledge about what are the boundaries that Islam puts yeah. of celebration, right? And uh, that's why they say these things. And they're influenced by liberalism. You can do whatever you want as long as you don't harm anyone else. They're not harming anyone. Yeah. They're just having also, celebration. That's the, when, when we had the tafsir about Surah Al-Kafirun, mm. the, the Ustad that even, he told us like, look, mm. it, th this doesn't mean that when we say, lakum dinukum wal mm -hmm. it doesn't mean like, okay, if yes. you're a Christian, no problem. Yes. If you're a Jew, no problem. Yes. If, you're, if you disbelieve, no problem. Mm -hmm. That's still a huge problem. Mm -hmm. It's like we don't accept it. We mm -hmm. don't have this common ground. And a lot of people, they have this wrong aqidah about this. When Allah Azza wa says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, what does Qul mean in the Arabic language? Say. To who? To Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, right? no, but the Qul is to me and you. Not only to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, of course. To, but Qul to who? The people. To the, to the Muslims. So if to I'm going to say to who, I'm, I'm Muslims already believe Allah is ahad, is it? You're going to say to people who don't believe Allah Azza wa Jal is Ahad. Qul. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Make it testify, right? Fasda' bima tu'mir. Fasda' bima tu'mir means like, you know, Sada' is like loud voice, loud noise, like, like make it clear, apparent. Yeah. The, the, the message that you're, you're giving. You understand? Mm -hmm. And, wa khul al-haqqu min rabbikum. Right? And say this is the truth from your Lord. All of these verses are clear that, that this is, qul ya ahl al-kitabi. Uh, قل again, but here is clear. You know your Ahl al-Kitab, so you don't want to say قل لهم في سمالس. No. قل يا Ahl al-Kitab, تعالوا إلى كلمتين سواء. سواء بيننا وبينكم. أن لا نعبد إلا الله. That we worship none but Allah. Come to a common term between us and you that we worship Allah alone. Right? So Allah is telling you here, go say to the people of the scriptures. And Allah, uh, he says, قل يا Ahl al-Kitab, لا تغلوا في دينكم. Say, O oh people of Scripture, do not transgress in your, in your religion. Do not say except the truth about Allah. Mm. So all of these, قل, 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 you know? <laughs> and Allah says to them themselves, تقولوا, ثلاثة, do not say three. Yeah. So all of these verses are explicit and clear. And subhanAllah, you find like uh, the statement of, which is a completely clear statement, subhanAllah, of uh, Abdullah ibn Amr al As, where he said, من بنى ببلاد الكفار who is staying in the lands of the disbelievers right فصنع نيروزا هو مهرجانا نيروزا مهر مهرجان is just celebration he celebrated with them and gifted with them and did all of these things right ثم مات على ذلك and he dies in that state حشر معهم يوم القيامة he will be he will be gathered with them on the day of judgment this is a statement of a sahabi عبد الله بن عمر العاص this is not just for your friend saying this yeah he's saying this is what's going to happen and that's why you have the hadith of, is based on the hadith of the prophet عليه الصلاة who imitates a group of people, he is from among them. Again, some people, oh, you've been extreme. Brother, I'm just telling you what the Prophet you know? yeah. I just, I'm reading to you what the Prophet is saying. Yeah. What the Sahaba are saying. It's not my opinion. The Prophet said, And Sheikh Al Islam in Taymiyyah, he, he commented on that and he said, The least uh, thing you can take from this hadith is whoever, uh, whoever does that is committing a major sin. Mm -hmm. Because if you take it at its, at its apparent, the person is committing disbelief. He's a disbeliever because for who men whom he's from them. If you imitate disbelievers, you become disbeliever. A disbeliever. So he yeah. says the least you could say is haram. You know, at least you could say this is haram. You know, yeah. least. But uh, there is no other options that you can go to. And that's why the Prophet uh, when he went to uh, when he went to Medina and he found out the people in Medina are celebrating different holidays that they had, right? For the people of uh, Kufar of Quraysh and people who are living in Medina, the people, those different people had certain holidays, right? When the Prophet Islam, he, my, he went to Medina as well, the people of Medina had their own celebrations, right? So the Prophet Islam, he said, what is all of these? He said, the holidays. So the Prophet Islam said, Amma nahnu, but us, we have two holidays, yeah? Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. He didn't mm. say, you know what, celebrate with them, gift with them, it's okay, you know, it's a fun, fun time, you know, you can dance and have trees in the back, uh, background. No, he said what? He said, look, but us, so what is this? A separation. But us, which means there's us and them now, yeah? It's not a one group where everyone is doing the same mumbo jumbo, right? It's, there's no such thing. 
But us, meaning separation now, we have two holidays. We have Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. This is what we have as Muslims. These are the times in which you, you celebrate as a Muslim, right? Other than that, you don't go outside of this, of this circle. And what is the, really the, 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 the reason those people celebrate? What is the, the, what is the, uh, the real problem in the Muslim Ummah? Aqeedah. Not, right? not just aqeedah. Just the, going with... with, uh, with, with see, it's so close to what, what you both are, are saying. I think, mm -hmm. I think like even the lecture that you gave mm -hmm. at the university, right? That was about the comp uh, compatibility of the mm -hmm. West, right? Mm -hmm. So I think people, they really, uh, they find it difficult mm -hmm. to have this separation because when you live in this Western uh, culture where everything is like liberalized and you have to uh, uh, take, all, also, uh, yeah, take everything into account. Mm -hmm. So when the Christians are celebrating this, you have to congratulate them with their mm -hmm. cele uh, celebrations. You have also the Easter bunny, for example. I don't know where the bunny came from. Uh, and uh, yeah, because they, they just tell us Eid Mubarak. So we have to do something, something uh, as well, like reciprocity, right? It's true. That's a part of it that we mentioned, which is the idea of compromise. But this is not the main issue. The main issue is imitating the kuffar. Imitating the disbelievers. This is the core thing. Prophet والسلام, he said, You will follow, you will tread the same steps that those who were before you tread. Even if they, like, shibrim shibr, like, uh, step by step. Even if they enter into a hole, you know, where the animals dig the hole and stay inside, you will go after them, you know? Mm. And then yeah. the people ask, Jews and Christians? Prophet said, Who else? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Who else? So the Prophet ﷺ said that you will tread the same path, right? You will do the same thing that these people are doing. But then the Prophet ﷺ, what? How was his life? The Prophet ﷺ, you know, if you read some of the books of Hadith, which unfortunately people are not doing, you know, but if you read the books of Hadith, you have chapters. These chapters are titled what? Babu Mukhalafat al Yahudi wal Nasara. That's it. A chapter of going against the Jews and the Christians. <laughs> this is a chapter, right? And then the chapter, tens of Hadith. The Prophet uh, 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 Trim your mustache and grow your beard. Go against the Jews and the Christians. Pray in your shoes. Because the Jews and Christians do not pray in their shoes. This, these are all a hadith. I'm telling you now the Prophet yeah. Islam, what he was saying. Do not wear red uh, cloth, right? Just pure red. Uh, fully red. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. this is the the, the 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 habit of the Jews and the Christians. Certain hairstyles. Do not do this specific thing. Because this is the habit of the Jews and the Christians. Uh -huh. Even when the verse was revealed about... Uh, the uh, you see to which extent this was the case with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is even when 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 the verse was revealed uh, they ask you about menstruation say it is harmful to stay away from intercourse with women within the period of menstruation then they, they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Jews at the time they, uh, they did not eat with their women, they did not touch their women, they stay away, different place from their women at the period of menstruation. Mm. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, do everything except intercourse. You can mm. kiss your wife, you can hug your wife, you can eat with your wife, everything. Mm. Then when the Jews heard, they said, this man, or Pro Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he doesn't leave anything except he goes against the sin. To that extent, this is, was, it, was, it was a known thing, you know, it's for them. This is not a one instance in which the Prophet said, he said he's not leaving anything yeah. except that he is going against the sin. So he's trying to distinguish yeah. as much as possible, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. Focusing on the identity. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That Muslims are not yeah. Christians, are not Jews. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they have their own identity, right? Yeah. And they have their own traditions and they have their own teachings. In fact, it is something that is revelation to go against the, the habits that they're doing. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. they have, but this is a problem I'm saying, imitation. But I, Muslims. I, I also think, yes. excuse me for, uh, I also think it's it's because um, maybe maybe a lot of Muslims feel like we don't have anything to be proud of or to have our uh, identity to hold strong and uh, strong. And that's yeah. maybe why people think these people ha ha have achieved a lot of things. I should follow them and go like for Like what? The, what the, is it that they have? Uh, like for example, like yeah. on Eid, some people, they complain. They say, yeah, I'm not doing uh, that much. I'm just going to visit my uncle and that's uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And um, let's do something. I don't know uh, what to do. My family is not doing anything. Uh -huh. And then when it's like Christmas, Families coming together, but Everything like is. the holidays 
in the Netherlands, especially, mm -hmm. but also I think in England and in the West as well, they are, they are built around these Christian holidays. Mm -hmm. but the people there are not, yeah. they claim, like for example, in the Netherlands, they say we're a Christian country. We have the norms and values are by the Christian, uh, uh, by the Christian, uh, mm -hmm. by Christianity, by mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not true. It's not. We already made not, the lecture. No, about it, it's, 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 it's been secular a yes. long time ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so look, I don't think like this is the case because the truth is, as I'm saying, I I really really believe the issue is what I said is that first yeah. the idea of compromise and secondly the idea of imitation, right? But what you're saying, the answer to it's super simple because it has nothing to do with Islam. It has to. Do, it has something to do with the community. What you do in Eid goes back to you. If, mm. if you spent Eid in, in, in a Muslim country, wherever that Muslim country is, you go to Morocco, you go to Algeria, you, if you stand, spend Eid in Tunisia or in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I remember one time in Saudi, I was, uh, I prayed Eid there. And then uh, I'm just walking the street, in the street as a young, I was young at that time. And then people give me money. I don't even know them. Because mm. it's Eid, they give you money, you know. Mm. <laughs> this is how it is. It's how the community is, right? Yeah, uh, you find other communities, they, they always in, traveling. Eid in Muslim countries, they always families are vis visiting one another. Yeah. So if you're saying in the West they're not doing it, that's their fault. Yeah. But that's not a problem from from Islam. You've not created the Eid environment yourself. Mm. That's something you have to create. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that Kufar have this thing. We don't have it. When well, you can do it, <laughs> anytime could you, you want to do it, right? Could you also say like an an, an extra another reason? Um, like some people they have this inferior mind. Said. Yeah, I was going like to come to that. Pleasing, yeah. pleasing non-Muslims. Exactly. So uh, you know what? Yeah. You have people on LinkedIn. You, you guys use LinkedIn. You know what LinkedIn is? I know. On, on yeah. LinkedIn. So you but have also, people yeah. like telling stories about their accomplishments, like just to please yeah. the yes. please the other people. Like, look, a Muslim can also go to uni as well, and a Muslim woman is also mm. empowerment and yes. can also work. Like, yes. it. Mm. When I when I when I read those things, and I, that's why I deleted it. I just get <laughs> agitated, right? Mm. I get irritated. I think like. Yeah. Uh, like um, a brother once told me, he said, look, mm. uh, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his sunnah, we have even have learned how to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And when people don't even know how to go to the bath bathroom properly, right? Mm -hmm. They don't even use water, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why should we like be inferior and think, okay, let's please this person. Mm -hmm. So we could yeah, like think, okay, the Muslim guy is a good guy. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, you know, subhanAllah, I, this is, I was going to come to this point because this is... This is correct. This idea of uh, inferiority complex. You have a lot of what I call coconuts. <laughs> Why do we call them coconuts? They're black outside, but white inside, you know? <clears throat> they want to be white, but they're white inside because they cannot be white outside, you know? <laughs> so they, they try to be white in their values, you know? Quote unquote. But because you cannot be, they're never going to look at you as a white person. Yeah. As one of them, you know? Mm. So you're always not one of them. And Allah told you in the Quran, Ya khi, read the Quran. Open it, read it, man. Allah has told you. The Jews and the Christians will never be pleased with you. Until you follow their religion. That's why they're happy when you say Merry Christmas. Because now you're following their religion. But they're not going to be happy unless you follow their religion. So now you want to follow the religion? You're no longer Muslim then. Don't come to us and say I'm a Muslim doing this. Because Allah told you the only way they're going to be tr truly pleased with you is that you follow the religion. So this idea of inferiority complex is the biggest disease we have today. Yeah. Biggest disease we have today. This inferiority complex is the same thing with, the, with following the Jews and the Christians. They're linked together. There's the same idea, right? The reason they follow them is because they, they, they believe, they feel inferior to them. Yeah. Many of them talk about this idea that, you know what, look how, the, how many uh, dunya stuff that they're advancing. Brother, just go back like 100 years ago to see who was advanced, you know? Or yeah. 200 years ago, who was advanced? Yeah. These days we alternate between the people, okay? There's a time where you have an empire that has power and then history changes, another empire started, started having power. You're just living in a time in which you do not have that Muslim empire. Mm -hmm. If you were at the time of Ottomans, okay, they didn't believe now Christianity is false and all turned to Muslims because they were inferior in the dunya aspect. Mm -hmm. They didn't look at it that way. But now you're claiming just because it's a small period of time, in which some countries, because there's many Muslim countries now that are very advanced, Especially yeah. look at the countries of the Khalid where you have the Kufar themselves yeah. traveling to these countries to live there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have the safety there that they will never dream to have themselves. SubhanAllah, yeah. yeah. They will yeah. never dream to leave their, their, their belongings and go with the expensive watches in the yeah. streets I think and cars. Even, I think even in like, give it like 20 more years, it's <coughs> like the Middle East is going to be the, uh, especially uh, the countries near the Emirates. Yeah. They're going to be the first world countries. Not gonna, it's not going to be Europe anymore. 
Many people are saying that. Many people are saying, like, this is the new, the future. Future is the Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. You can see the signs of it being the future, right? From a worldly perspective, again, yeah? This is yeah, a yeah, problem. Yeah. It's not an akhirah perspective. Yeah. If they become now, from a worldly perspective, are you now going to start following Islam? I, I don't think you will. Yeah. Even because this is an excuse that people are using. Even if those Muslim countries became now the uh, the empire, that you're not going to find these people now that start practicing Islam. Yeah. That's not the reason why they're not practicing, but this is an excuse you see them. Yeah. But and and this is why you see these people have this inferiority complex that they go follow any like and you see this apparent the most despicable type of uh, when I see it is when a non-Muslim just says anything good about Islam. Yeah, the world the world goes up and down, you know. Everyone is sharing, everyone is talking about celebrity of some sort, a singer, or this person yeah. said one word good about word about Islam, you know. Oh, I think Muslims are uh, like very, very, uh, you know, practicing. And then like goes everywhere, like all oh, this person. Yeah, who said it? Or he said it, or he didn't say it. You know, we don't care. Yeah. So, what, uh, do, you, what do you think are some, you know, practical solutions for that the people c can steps that people can take to work on this problem? You know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, uh, subhanAllah, before that, I want to talk about something very briefly. Mm -hmm. Is the idea that, look, because we talked about the 25th of the December and this and that and the birth yeah. of Jesus, and mm -hmm. you, one of you mentioned it as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we want to say as Muslims, because it could be some people, non-Muslims seeing this, mm -hmm. we're not necessarily, against, we're no way, in no way, shape or form, are, are we against Jesus, peace be upon him. We're mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Right? In fact, we warn against celebrating the birth date, which is unknown, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he's not even known, but they think they know. Yeah. But whoever celebrates that, you will find this warning against this idea because it's not a, a Islamic practice. Again, you see now, imitating the kuffar. They celebrate Christmas, so Muslims have down to make the day. Or they yeah, celebrate Mawli, the day. Exactly, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The birthday of the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam. So we do that. We say we are against even celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Wasallam. So when we say this about Jesus or about anyone, or and we also mention the reasons that it's a pagan holiday, that doesn't mean we're against Jesus. And if you look at Jesus, peace be upon him, or his birth in the Quran or his description, yeah, and you find in the Quran a lot of like, you see how Islam looks at Jesus, peace be upon him. And like the Prophet he said, for example, that there is no child of Adam that is born, except that the, the shaitan touches him. And then he screams because of the touch of the shaitan. Except, and there's exception here, uh, Maryam, Mary, and mm -hmm. her son, Jesus, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. Two people have not been touched. Why? Allah Azza wa mentions in the Quran, about the mother of Mary, right? She said uh, about uh, having the daughter. When she said, oh my Lord, I, I give birth uh, to a female. Allah knows what she gave birth to. I seek protection or refuge in you uh, for her and her children from mm. Satan, from the shaitan. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith that He's protected. So look, very unique thing for so Jesus, peace be upon him. Dua. Because yeah. of the dua. Okay. And uh, also the, the fact that Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the closest ally or a friend of, of Jesus, mm -hmm. peace be upon him. And then he says that the, the, the prophets are brothers, but from different mothers. You know, when people say he's my brother from a different mother, yeah, this yeah, literally yeah. the Prophet ﷺ say that. <laughs> yeah. And he says, there's no prophet between me and him. SubhanAllah. This is how the Prophet ﷺ spoke about uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. And you see the description of the whole story of the birth of Isa alayhi salam. And how is it described in the Quran, right? In Surah Maryam, uh, where Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمَ إِذِنْ تَبَذَتْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًا And mentioned in, in the book when uh, Mary, she, she took a secluded place from her family. Yeah, فتخذ من من دونهم حجابا فارسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سوية. That, that she took a secluded place and then we sent to her our ruh, uh, Angel Gabriel. فتمثل لها بشرا سويا he took the form of a man and قالت إني أعود بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا she said I seek refuge in Allah if you fear God then she was okay she's alone in a secluded place a man is coming because he's coming in a form of a man she's scared she's saying you know if you fear God I seek protection and God from you so then قال إنما أنا رسول ربك ليها بلكي غلام زكي I'm the messenger of your Lord to give you a news of a pure son uh, then قالت أن يكون لغلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أكو بغية. She said, "How am I going to have a child?" Because she did not have intercourse with anyone. She didn't touch anyone in in men, strange men. She secluded place and she was worshiping God mm. in the mihrab alone. She was worshiping God. She said, "How am I going to have a child?" You know, this man coming to me. I don't. Who said he's a messenger? How am I going to have a man if I don't have a child? Why? 
because it's the habit of humans. How do you have a child? A man and a woman come together and then mm. a woman becomes pregnant and a child comes. So uh, Muslims here, what, what I'm trying to say here to people who might be Christian is look, Muslims here, the Quran is given a description of the miraculous birth, birth of Jesus. What I, what I find what? ironic mm. is if you look nowadays, not only just the Christians, but all the other religions, they're only attacking the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you look at the Christians, mm. like, okay, you have a, you, the, the Christians, they have this perspective. They think, okay, Jesus, uh, according to Islam, how they believe it, how, how we view it, mm -hmm. it's wrong, mm -hmm. according to them. Mm -hmm. But at least we are, we have something in common and that's just the prophet Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. I know I, I've never seen like uh, Christians debating Hindus, debating Jews, debating mm -hmm. disbelievers. Mm -hmm. there, there will be some. There mm -hmm. are like exceptions, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. but mostly it's always attack on the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And when you bring up this hadith, like when the Prophet ﷺ is actually saying like he's a brother from another mother, mm -hmm. I, I find this astonishing. Mm -hmm. Like how the Christians are behaving in this way mm -hmm. and trying to find anything to destroy Islam, mm -hmm. and. We, we have what you're, what you're speaking about, like for example, we have Surah Maryam, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Surah Ali Imran, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. We have all these names mm -hmm. and all these figures that were around Jesus, yes, right? SubhanAllah, and we see, you see how the Quran describes Jesus in, in when he speaks, like when she goes to her people and then uh, she said, you've done something outrageous because you, you know you should be a pure woman. Mm -hmm. And then Isa alayhi salam speaks, right? And then he says, inni abdullahi. I'm the servant of God. He's given me the book and he made me a prophet. Mm. Look, and he's made me blessed wherever I go. And he commanded me to establish prayer, right? Mm. And to give charity. As long as I live. Mm. Right? And the, this description, <coughs> you see the purity of the descriptions, right? Mm. And like, in Allah, uh, Allah gives you this, uh, the description of a word from him, right? Which is be and it is, though, when he says to Jesus, be and it is a miraculous birth of Jesus, right? These like pure descriptions. Ismuhu, even the name is given, right? In the, in the, the name is given there in the, in the glad tiding. His name is Al Masih ibn Maryam. And the Messiah, we believe he's the Messiah, right? So when you talk about now them targeting like specifically Islam, uh, mostly are the missionaries or the people who talk about religion, this and that. The reason is simple. And SubhanAllah, I talk about this a lot as well. They have nothing to talk, like honestly, you don't see videos where they're actually talking about their own religion, you know? Go my channel, for example, right? And there's people, better examples than me, many examples. Go to my channel, see, there's a class about tafsir explaining the Quran, videos just specifically addressing other Muslims, right? Educational content, you'll find these things. Uh, you're not gonna find in every video where I'm going, look, Christian this, Christian that, book this, book that, you're not gonna find that. Yeah. It's but well, if I talk with a Christian, it's well balanced. Exactly. But yeah, if yeah. I talk with a Christian, oh yeah, of course I'm going to talk about Christianity because he's a Christian. <laughs> but there's two people, and I let that person uh, present his point of view, yeah. right? But mm -hmm. I'm not talking behind his back now, just behind his back, talking about this and this. I don't think I have even a single video where I'm just talking about Christianity without anyone else talking. About it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, I, even though I can, but I don't think I have one video like this. But the thing is, why are they doing that? Because they see Islam as a threat. Why do they see Islam as a threat? Islam is growing and everyone, they, they see Christians are converting, leaving the religion in massive numbers. Mm -hmm. And churches are empty. You know, I was just in the mosque here because it was a church before the... And, and the, uh, the, the brother, yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The brother told me the story is that they went to the people of the church and they offered them a million uh, euros here, right? A million euros for the, uh, the, uh, the church. And they said, no. And they said later on, one year later, they came and they said, look, take it for 500,000. <laughs> It's empty, you know? Yeah. No one is going to these churches. No one is going to this. Yeah. Some Christians get upset. Look, we're buying it because we need a place to pray. And you don't pray. What, what do you want us to do? It's yeah. an empty building. We're literally going to fall over. Yeah. So why are they becoming upset? Because they're envious. And Allah told us in the Quran. Many of the people of the scriptures. They wish. They turn you after your faith into kuffar, into disbelievers. Hasadan, envy. From their, their, their selves. After the truth have been made clear to them. So they know the truth. But they're envious of the truth that these people are actually following, practicing, and doing these things, right? So, okay, they know Islam is a, is a threat. They know Islam is the biggest growing religion in the world. You look at the UK, for example, the census, the government itself gives you the stats. They tell you, you know what, like Christians are like 
dropping. Yeah. And they keep dropping and dropping and dropping. And they've been dropping since, you know what, the beginning of the uh, lighting period and liberalism and science and all of these things. Christians are, people are leaving Christianity. Millions of people are leaving Christianity. And Muslims are increasing from 4.9 to 6.4. And then the, the other people who are increasing, some hundreds of thousands of Muslims, people become Muslims. And other people are atheist agnostic. People leaving Christianity into atheism, agnosticism, right? Yeah. So they know this, this is the only threat. Mm. They're attacking it because it's the only threat. Judaism is not a threat. They're not ev evangelizing. Yeah. And they're not speaking about the religions. Uh, Hinduism, they're not, they're not in the try and speak about religion. No one is converting, you know, massive numbers of, oh, I've become a Hindu, you know, this is my yeah, conversion yeah, yeah. story. You don't find that. So the reason that they are targeting Islam, because, they know, you know what, look, we've got nothing to preach, really. How can I go to someone and say, you know what, God, he sent himself to kill himself, to save himself from himself. Like, uh, people are not going to accept what I'm saying, isn't it? People yeah. are going to be like, okay, like, God is, is God, but he's man. He's the son, but he's not the son. And he's the Holy Spirit, but he's not the Holy Spirit. You know? And he died, but he didn't die. Actually, the flesh died because God doesn't die. He's immortal. So did God die or no? It's actually the flesh died. So did God die for his sin or the flesh die for his sin? God died for my sin. But how did God die for his sin when God doesn't die? Look, how can they go preach these things to people? That's why you'll not see Christians giving out Bibles. The Bible is too big for people to read. They never give the Bible. They give leaflets or the Gospel of John. Or the other gospels, if like rarely, but they give mainly the Gospel of John because it has more of the I am sta statements. Yeah, it's a lot of. It's right now. If you see, it's mm. uh, really subjective. You see, it's more about the feeling, mm. like we have to unite mm. and hold hands and sing in church. Mm -hmm. That's. It's for me. Yeah. Uh, like you, you, sometimes you even see people. They say, "Look, um, I've I, I became Christian. I saw a dream where I saw Jesus." Mm -hmm. That's really subjective. Mm -hmm. I don't. You see, it's it's coming from. You could make this whole story up, mm -hmm. and I think the people when they look at Islam, what they hate about it is mm -hmm. that we don't tolerate everything. We have like uh, we have boundaries. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like. Like if you if you if you tol if you if you tolerate everything, mm -hmm. you stand for nothing. Mm -hmm. So you have nothing to you 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 find this okay this okay and that's what's going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. You're going to imitate the kuffar. Mm -hmm. Then tomorrow you will have a Christmas, yeah. uh, Islamic Christmas. Right? Islamic Christmas. Yeah, but I already <laughs> told you, they tr already tried to, to imitate it. They're already trying to imitate it. This idea of the birthday yeah, of the yeah. Prophet This is the imitation of it. Yeah. Because, uh, and they're already celebrating it in a way, right? Mm. So they're already doing these things. And yeah, I know there's a famous quote of a specific individual. We don't need to mention his name, but yeah, about if you tolerate everything. But it's true. If you tolerate it, that's why Muslims have boundaries, right? And uh, Islam puts boundaries. And Christians used to have boundaries, actually. Mm -hmm. But what changed is now they're not Christians, they're liberals. They yeah. think they're Christians, but they're liberals. When you say hold hands, it's the effects of liberalism. Liberalism have changed, reformed Christianity. What Christianity is, is supposed to be called, right? What, what the teachings of Christianity are supposed to be have been reformed now by liberalism. And people have adopted the liberalistic values and they think they're following Christianity when they're not. That's why when you bring them the Bible, they don't care. It yeah. doesn't matter what the Bible says, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's why this... We became modern now. So yeah, yeah. Bible that's why this minister, than, uh, this minister okay. that I told you about, mm. who said uh, in the interview, he said, it's pagan, but I celebrate it. You know, I have a tree, just bought this, <laughs> this tree back home, you know. He's telling you it's pagan, but he's telling you he's celebrating it. Yeah. Because for them, it's like, you know what? Who cares what the Bible says, man? Who cares what I even, it's pagan? I even think because yeah. if you look at Christianity during uh, the last 500, 600 years especially, mm. is that uh, a lot of people in Europe they're very allergic to religion mm -hmm. because of Christianity. And they mm -hmm. think like, okay, mm -hmm. what happened, what the Christians did during mm -hmm. those days, yes. a thousand years ago, 500 mm -hmm. years ago with mm -hmm. the Crusades, those mm -hmm. times that they think, okay, Islam also needs enlightenment mm -hmm. and yeah. other religions reformation. also need mm -hmm. enlightenment, reformation, mm -hmm. of course. So we need to reform. We have to change. We need mm -hmm. to add something, yeah. remove something. That's going to be very problematic. They see, they see <laughs> it in the same picture, right? All yeah. religions are... This, you know what, these teachings of wearing the hijab and this and that, yeah. right? these have been 1,400 years ago teachings, you know, uh, punishing this guy for this sin or these laws of, uh, you know, what uh, punishment for stealing. And these are things for 1,400 years. This is what they come with, right? And this is the thing, if you reform something, this is what I always say, if you reform something, that means that something was not perfect. Yeah. Cannot reform something which was perfect. Mm. That means there's deficiencies. Yeah. And if you believe Islam needs reformation, you're essentially saying this belief because you're saying Islam is not, it, needs, it has mistakes and problems. Yeah, so you're saying I, Islam needs to be changed because it's not perfect. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was three weeks, uh, three weeks ago. I was in the supermarket, so uh, I checked out, and I stood outside, 
And uh, this old man came to me. Mm-hmm. He looked like maybe 70, 80 years old. He's like mm-hmm. the older generation, Dutch man. Mm-hmm. And he told me like, he said, look, uh, because I, I was also like wearing a long thobe. Mm-hmm. And he told me, uh, this, is, this, 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 this isn't, uh, th- this doesn't fit in our culture. <laughs> yes. okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told him, I told him, look, I told him, uh, are you religious? And he said, I'm mm-hmm. Christian. Mm. I said, okay. I said, uh, so you believe in, uh, so you believe in the in the prophets, right? Mm. He said, yeah, yeah, I believe in the prophets. And I said, uh, what do you think about Jesus? Did he wear jeans or did he wear my thobe? Who mm-hmm. looks more like Jesus, mm. me or you? Mm. And what did he I say? C- he couldn't answer. Mm? I said, I said, if we look at the, if we look at his mother Mary, mm-hmm. how do you look? Mm-hmm. How did she look? Sorry, mm-hmm. how, uh, with a hijab mm-hmm. or without the hijab? Mm-hmm. You tell me. Mm-hmm. I said, so when you're a Christian, I expect you to next time come in these. I can give you one. I, I made a joke. I said, okay, I can give you one. I have one in. I have many colors. I told him. Uh, he uh, he didn't know how to answer. <laughs> well, he can't answer, and that's why a lot of Christians they think. And I always tell them that Jesus was not a white man. Yeah, he didn't came from North North America. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's why I was speaking to one person who's a Christian, and then he said to me, "But uh, but I'm white." And, and I said to him, Jesus is not white. Yeah. Uh, you think you're following the white religion? You're not. Yeah. Jesus is Palestinian. He was like, he was uh, what? He looked more like all of these Muslims that you see. Yeah. He looked nothing like what you think a white man is in some churches, you know? Mm-hmm. But would that man do the same thing with a Jew? Now, I want you to ask yourself that question. I don't think so. Would he go to the Jewish no. person and say, you know what? Look, you know, you're wearing this thing there. This does not fit in our culture. Would he do it? No. He wouldn't do it. Now, the, the question is why? Why he wouldn't dare do it <laughs> with the Jewish? I'll let the, the, the people think. Yeah, we have laws, especially that's the first yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, because but not only a Jewish person. Yeah, I'll yeah. even tell you, would he do that with a black person who's coming with a, a black woman who's coming with the? You know, they they have head covers as well from Africa. The women wear the uh, specific head covers in different styles. Yeah, like, when they show their neck, right? Yes, like yes it's like exactly. a turban. It's yeah, a turban. Yeah. Turban. Like some yeah, women yeah. are imitating them today and think they're wearing hijab. You know, uh-huh. but the point is this culture of things that these people sometimes do. Uh, would he go to that woman, the black woman there, and tell her this thing? No, because you know what? He's feeling what? I'm going to be the racist now. You know what? Yeah, yeah. The racist card now is going to come out, you know? <laughs> so no, 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 no. But the Muslim is okay. So Muslim is Muslim okay. Is, yeah, Jew fine. is not okay. Jew is not okay. Hindu, even Hindu. A Hindu woman wearing a Hindu dress or a man wearing a Hindu thing or has the dot. you think he's going to go to them? I don't think so. Ah, so why is he coming so. to us? This is the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, because Islam is the only thing is under the spotlight, right? This is what the news is talking about. This is what the governments are talking about. Because look, the Jewish women cover their head. The Jewish women have apostasy laws. The Jewish women have uh, the uh, the adultery laws, toning for adultery. All of these things are in the Jewish book. All of them are in the Jewish. But they do go. They, do they go to Jewish people and say you need the formation. Did you hear that? Mm, no. You don't hear that, right? No, no, no. You don't hear that. And, and some of the practices of Hindus like that are completely irrational. Do you, you see them going to them? You guys need their formation. This. They recognize that Islam is the thing, is the future. Islam is the future. And that's why they're afraid from Islam. Because they know Islam is the future. Islam is spreading. People are accepting the religion. We need to combat it in any way, shape, or form. Because it's true. It is the truth, yeah? Yeah. What, I've, uh, what I also wanted to mention is this uh, Saturnalia, right? Mm. This, this started in the Scandinavian uh, countries, right? Mm. So Norway, Finland, right? Yeah, I, I believe in the so, north. yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah, cold countries stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what Roman I've heard, Empire, what, what I've heard is that because during winter you've seen that all the leaves mm. would uh, fall off from all the trees mm-hmm. except the Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. That's why they put it in the house because they thought it's gonna give them this mm. strength mm. because this tree still has its leaves on mm-hmm. and like they didn't have electricity back then, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't have like uh, like a, uh, like an oil lamp or something. Mm-hmm. They didn't sometimes even have fire mm-hmm. because it's really difficult mm-hmm. to because of the cold. Mm-hmm. So people believe like, okay, if we have this in our house, mm-hmm. it's gonna give us like some kind of a baraka, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Some yeah. blessing. Yeah, it's idols. That's yeah, that's idol worship. It is, the, yeah, it is yeah. idol worship and and the, the idol veneration and, and because look, mm-hmm. these teachings don't come from nowhere, but people don't want to question, right? Mm. Like. Why are you not questioning where is this idea? Okay, as a Christian, why don't you go to the church and say to them, okay, oh, here's the Bible, where is this idea? Where is this guy, it's a fat guy coming from down from my chimney? Where is it in the Bible? 
Where is this idea of uh, like giving gifts at this specific date? Where is this number even in the book? I told, I, I, I've, I've heard that this Santa Claus concept, mm. actually the real story is like, it's like a jinn because when we said like, uh, when you told uh, about like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said like, don't wear fully red. Mm -hmm. You see that the Santa Claus is fully wearing red. Mm -hmm. And he, um, that in, in, in those countries back then, mm -hmm. it was a tale that was going around children. Like mm -hmm. if you're at night, Santa Claus is gonna come mm -hmm. and he's gonna, uh, he's gonna uh, put you in his bag and mm -hmm. he's gonna take you with him. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a jinn story, right? Mm -hmm. Like a horror story. Mm -hmm. But now it's changed into this fat man, he's happy, white beard mm -hmm. and uh, with a Coca-Cola glass. Mm -hmm. It's so commercialized. Yes, that could be the case, subhanAllah. I do not know. I'm not sure. And, uh, but it could be the case. This is the fact that there is definitely an origin to every story. Right? Mm -hmm. not, things don't come up from non-existence. Yeah. Stories do not just appear for the sake of appearing. Yeah. There is an origin in which you will find that it's to do with that story. But the, the funny, you know, the funny thing is what? Imagine teaching your, your child deception from the, the time of their birth. Lies and deception when they realize, when they reach the age and realize, you've been lying to me all these times, there's no such thing as mm. fat man coming down my chimney, it was actually you all this time. Yeah, but play, people, but people, look, game. people lose, uh, use this uh, argument, especially like uh, mothers, they say, ah, it's fun for the children, mm. like, uh, for example, even the tooth mm. fairy, right? Mm. Like the fairy comes and uh, puts money mm -hmm. under your pillow. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard this story that uh, one guy accidentally put a hundred dollar bill <laughs> And he wanted to put a one dollar bill. Okay. So he said, ah, "Dad, my uh, my uh, I got a hundred dollar bill." Yeah. And he's like, "No, no, you got one dollar." I said, "No, no, it's a one hundred. I see two zeros." And mm. he's like, mm. <laughs> panicking, right? Mm. He can't take it back. <laughs> Khalas, that's it. Khalas, yeah, it's it. You give it sadaqa. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know, the funny thing is, I'm telling you, you can, you can say it's fun, but what are they teaching them? They're teaching them two things. First, as I said, deception. Mm -hmm. That you you are the ends justify the means. You can lie, deceive, which means you as a child can lie and deceive to your parents. If the is the if the end is good, they will do it to their parents, just like their parents did it to them. Mm -hmm. Why is it wrong? Why is it okay for you, not okay for me? <coughs> right? <coughs> and they lose the trust of what their parents teach them. Yeah. So so you you raise them as the people lie and you, there's no trust from your own parents, your own family members, not strangers yeah. because strangers could lie, but your own family members you can even trust what they say. Yeah. These th this is, is essentially what they're teaching them. But not only that, they're teaching them to give gratitude to other than God. This is the biggest problem. SubhanAllah, yeah. They're giving gratitude to other than God. Instead of teaching their children <clears throat> that who you should be grateful to is the one who created you and me and all of us. And the one who's actually given me as your pen and the provision for me to give you that gift. No, this imaginary, imaginary character is who you should be thanking. Mm. That is not in existence even. Mm. Yeah. So it, this concept of being thankful to God is not even there anymore. It's being thankful to imaginary things. It's been replaced. God's been replaced with something else. That's why, as we just said, this Christmas has nothing to do with Christianity. And they just celebrate it as a holiday. There's no Jesus in being the center of things. or They just use his name for no. the sake of using his name, you know? Uh, but yeah, it has nothing to do with the religious the religion aspect of it at all. Absolutely. So I think we, we had a lot of topics we, we we talked about a lot of things. He's a little uh, sleepy, yeah. Look, yeah, I'm <laughs> almost, uh, no, but <laughs> I think this this these topics could go on forever. I mm -hmm. think also um, very interesting topics, and um, but maybe maybe we can conclude um, to go more specifically about maybe there are some Christians looking or people or Muslims mm -hmm. with Christians friend Christian friends or. Christian family members, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. So, what? How how can we conclude with uh, with this message? What yeah. is what's a good message to end? Well, I we conclude with with this is that Muslims need to wake up from the idea of uh, compromise to understand the teachings mm -hmm. of the Quran and Sunnah when it comes to compromise. You don't have compromise. some boundaries, right? Exactly. You have your boundaries. Mm -hmm. Islam is not Christianity. Christianity is not Islam. Islam is not the West. West is not Islam. And uh, yes, we have commonalities. But those communalities are communalities. Uh, you're not going to create your own new communalities for the sake of compromise. And the second thing is to wake up from being a coconut, stop being coconuts, stop being uh, <laughs> people who look up to the white man and the white man says it, therefore it was right. He's my teacher, he's my leader. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know what they say, it, therefore it's true. They need to wake <laughs> up from this idea as well and realize that, you know what, we're Muslims, 
Mm. And Islam is superior. And I'm saying, look here, I'm, an Islam, I'm saying it clearly for anyone who wants to know this. We believe Islam is superior as an ideology. Or we wouldn't be Muslims. If I believe Christianity is superior, why would I be a Muslim? Yeah. If I believe liberalism is superior, why would I be a Muslim? Yeah. yeah. The fact that I'm a Muslim is a testimony of that you are, if you are a Muslim, testimony that Islam, you believe Islam is a superior ideology. Yeah. It's more beneficial. And I have reasons I can give for anyone who wants to know. If they like to ask. Mm -hmm. You believe Islam is a superior ideology. If you have a superior ideology, you should not look, uh, look up to anyone because you have the superior ideology, right? Or mm -hmm. you, why are you following the ideology? If something else, mm -hmm. you want to look up to something else. Yeah. So they have to wake up to these ideas and study the religion, read the Quran, the, the seer of the Prophet ﷺ, these things that we're mentioning that are verses of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, yes. of how he lived his life and how what was his treatment with the Jews and the Christians. And to understand this is how we implement as well, how the Sahaba mm -hmm. understood it, right? What did they do? And the, the, uh, the effects that mm -hmm. we just mentioned of actually following these things, if you're congratulating actually someone for cursing Allah Azza wa or associating a partner with Allah. Yeah, and yeah, the seeking knowledge, like seeking knowledge, is the most important thing. Waking up to these things, inshallah, and we ask Allah Azza to guide the Muslim Ummah, you know, and I mean, bring them back I mean. to the truth. Inshallah. Or do you have uh, a message for the Christians? Like yeah. we have a lot of Christians as well. They are watching, oh, okay. uh, watching this okay. podcast. So, yeah, yeah. a message for them. Okay, so yeah, my message to the Christians is to come back to Christianity, and through Christianity, I mean, following Christ. Who was Christ? Who was Jesus? Jesus was someone who fell on his face in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, when he prayed to his God. He fell on his face. Who prays like that today? The Muslim. I'll leave that for the Christians to answer. You know? oh. We'll leave it for the Christians. For the, Christ, for yeah? the Christian. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> who prays like that today, who falls on his face praying? Uh, who uh, uh, says that the one that knows everything is only God and that the, he doesn't know everything? Does that so sound like God? No. Jesus says in Mark 13, 32, that no one knows the day and the hour. No one knows the day of judgment. Prophet Muhammad said the same thing in the Quran. No one knows the day of judgment except Allah. Jesus says, no one knows the day and the hour, not the angels in heaven, not the son, only the father. Mm. The mother of Jesus was covered wearing a headscarf. The Bible teaches you not to have intercourse before marriage. This is if, they, if you want to believe this is the teachings of Jesus. Jesus worshipped one God alone. He never believed in the Trinity. Uh, he never believed the, none of the prophets of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Preach the Trinity, preach anything. Jesus never preached that he's God. In fact, he told you to worship God alone. Yeah. So in a sense, he is warning you from worshiping other than God. And he told you the only true God is the Father, whom you call the Father, in which you call the true God. Yeah. He said in John chapter 17, verse 3, the only true God is the Father. Mm -hmm. And he explicitly actually said that he's not God in many ways. Like one example, when, when a person asked him, uh, <coughs> uh, oh, good master. And then he said to, to him, why do you call me good? Only God is good. So if he was God, well, that question makes zero sense. Mm. Why would he say, why do you call me good? Only God is good. You're God. You know, he's just calling you a good master, right? Yeah. So he explicitly even denied this in many ways. So the message of the Christians is actually follow Jesus, become actual true Christians, come back to the true Christianity of following Jesus, who is a Muslim. As yeah. we say, a Muslim means someone who submits his will to God. Like Jesus said, let it be your will, not my will. You believe Jesus said that as Christians. So he submitted his will to God. Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad came with the same message, submitting his will to God. We're inviting you now to follow the same message of Jesus, which, which was the Prophet Muhammad message, to worship on God alone, to follow the prophets and messengers, to pray mm -hmm. by putting your face on the floor, to fast like Jesus fast, not to have, to be circumcised like Jesus was, not to uh, do uh, uh, adultery, fornication, all of these actions, gambling, excessive drinking, all of these things, all of these teachings, the same teachings, that we're telling you now that are present in your books that Jesus followed because we, we say Jesus was a Muslim. So come back to the true Christianity, meaning truly following Christ, mm -hmm. which is Islam. Yeah. Right? And he's, not, a he's, he's a brother from another mother. Yes. And he's the brother of another mother of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. And not what the church has invented later on or what Paul have taught you. Mm -hmm. This is what you, uh, this is my message to the Christians, you know? Okay. And yeah, may Allah Azza guide them. And us, inshallah, to the truth. Inshallah. And do, the, do your research on what we said, you know. Nothing yeah. I said here, you can go back, check the references, check mm -hmm. the details, check everything I said, you know. And fact check what I said. If you mm. want to re reach the truth, don't take my word for it. Yeah. Do your research as a Christian and you'll yeah. see. You have some, some specific uh, sources for research? for uh... Oh, Their own book if they read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. The, um, yes. I have one more question. Yes. So um, your channel, Muslim Lantern, mm. you speak about a lot of... Uh, 
with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's diverse. So not only Christians, uh, also Hindus, mm -hmm. uh, also Muslims as well mm -hmm. with the wrong aqidah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go in details, but that's yes. enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you also said you give some uh, hadith lessons, tafsir lessons? Tafsir lessons, yes. Tafsir lessons, yes, okay. On the channel, yes. So we can follow some tafsir lessons, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. 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 if the people, inshallah, want to benefit, and they're welcome, especially Christians, you said you have a Christian audience, they speak the English language. Yeah. Welcome to come and watch my discussions with Christians, mm -hmm. sometimes priests, uh, that they come and I engage with them. And they're welcome to see, again, cross-reference, because in my videos, I put references on the screen, you know? Perfect. We're very transparent, you know, yeah. and I bring sources from what the Christians themselves say. So yeah, you yeah. do your own research, and trust me, you will end up being a Muslim in there. Can some people challenge you as well? well? Of course, go welcome. to the live. They're welcome. <laughs> I do live streams, of course. You're mentioning in yeah, the yeah, evening yeah. usually, so weekends and different times. You can you're always welcome. If you see me live, you're welcome mm -hmm. to come on. Everyone yeah. is welcome. The link is there. It's a public thing. People can join. Then you can engage, ask questions, engage in discussions. Mm -hmm. Everyone is welcome, and anyone is welcome as long as they're respectful. Sure. And yeah. uh, they're, they're the rules of conduct, exactly. uh, being respectful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 that yeah. is the only condition we have. Okay, okay, so. good. Brothers, barakallahu fikum. The brothers also yes. from Zeld Bomo, barakallahu fikum. Yes. Thank you for uh, being here. Yes. And uh, we'll see you next time, inshallah. inshallah. Brothers and sisters, so this is going to be the end of the podcast. Uh, don't forget to like, share this podcast, and uh, subscribe, inshallah. And subscribe also to our brother, Muhammad Ali, the Muslim Lantern. Or is it Muslim Lantern? The Muslim Lantern. Yes. The Muslim Lantern. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.